Well, this week in our tourism feature, we're going to be learning more about Gibraltar's history and what those who visit Gibraltar learn from a visit, for example, to here at the Gibraltar Museum. And with me is Tyson Lee Holmes of the Gibraltar Museum. Tyson, uh, let's start off with what are the frequently asked questions that you get from visitors to the museum? Okay, so mostly we tend to get a lot of questions from um, the military history in, in Gibraltar. We tend to get a lot of people from the UK who are either ex-military themselves or very, very interested in the, in the military or fortification aspect of Gibraltar. There's a wide range of history to process at the museum, from the Great Siege to the Rock's natural history, the vessels that have visited the Rock over the years and the aircraft and how we got around back in the day. Now, Gibraltar was actually at the forefront of scientific discoveries in the 18th and 19th centuries. Um, we can see that through the, the discovery of the, of the skull in 1848, the Neanderthal skull in Forbes Quarry. Um, but that wasn't the only thing. Um, people were actually studying all sorts of fossils here, um, particularly in the, in the breccias in Roja Bay. Um, so people, a, lot, a lot of people were actually very interested. Um, the military personnel that was um, spending their time here, in their spare time they would go out exploring, uh, mainly in the caves of Gibraltar as well. And they were really at the forefront of scientific um, discovery and, and research at the time. We walked along the various rooms and exhibits which cover a wide breadth of the rock's diverse history. Well, I've been coming to the museum since as long as I can remember, really. And one thing that's always stayed with me is this impressive uh, model of Gibraltar. Uh, what's the story with it? Well, this is actually probably my, my favorite piece in, in the museum. Um, this is a, a model of the whole of Gibraltar, not just the, the rock, but the whole of the territory of Gibraltar, from what is now the frontier to Europa Point. Um, and this was actually built in 1865. Um, it was b uh, based on a survey carried out a couple of years earlier by uh, Charles Warren of the Royal Engineers. And uh, the survey is actually very, very accurate. The, the maps themselves would actually be a lot bigger than the model is. Um, and if you look at the, the buildings themselves, the, the accuracy is incredible. Not only is every building of the time represented, but every window is painted on there, every shutter is painted on there. The, the shadow cast by those shutters is painted in there. Um, so the, the accuracy is, is incredible for, for the time. And one of the must-see areas of the museum is the Moorish Baths. So Tyson, how far back do the uh, Moorish Baths go and how vital is it to uh, keep them in check and also look after them but not really damage them? So the Moorish Baths actually date back to the um, 14th century, uh, the Islamic period. And um, yeah, um, we actually carried out a, a quite larger refurbishment um, a few years ago. Um, Historically, the, the walls had been whitewashed and uh, new floors had been laid down. So we stripped it all back and, and took it back to, um, to the original walls. And uh, obviously, being a, a historical monument, it's actually listed and protected as such. Um, we do need to keep checks on it and make sure that uh, any damp issues are, are addressed uh, appropriately. Um, and uh, consolidation of walls, that's the, the main issues that we need to look at here. And so, whether it's local school visits or day trippers or those coming from further afield for a longer stay, the Rock has so much to offer, not only at what's around us now, but looking back to the past.